I've been using the X-T5 for well over three months now, and I can confidently say that this is, without a doubt, the best camera that Fujifilm makes for photographers. Now, hang on, hang on. Isn't the X-H2S the flagship Fujifilm camera, the most expensive Fujifilm crop sensor camera that you can buy? Shouldn't this be the one that you say is the best camera for photographers? Well, I think the X-H2S is an incredible camera. In fact, it's actually probably the best hybrid shooter that I've ever used. But I think if we're talking strictly from a photography perspective, I actually like the X-T5 more than the X-H2S. And I'll explain why in this video. Okay, so now that I'm back filming on the X-H2S, let's talk about what I love so much about the X-T5. So for starters, it has to be the physical controls of the X-T5. The dials and the way that you interact with the camera make it so much fun to use. And not only that, but I find that with the dials, I can actually change settings much quicker than I can on the PASM layout, like on the X-H2S. So what I mean by this is you can see all the settings laid out directly in front of you. So if you need to make a big jump, say from one one twentieth of a second to one one thousandth of a second, it's much faster with the dials I find than with a scroll wheel. This is in conjunction with the size of the camera, which without an attached grip is actually tiny. And when you use it with something like this 27 millimeter 2.8 lens from TT Artisan, which I'm actually currently testing out, uh, review for this will be coming very, very soon as well. Once I've just had a little bit more experience with it, it makes it really, really small and compact and it's just perfect to take with you everywhere. And while I love the fact that the X-H2S, you know, has a big comfy grip, its size, it's a lot more reminiscent of a big pro camera for which, you know, when you're using it just as like a personal photography camera, it can be a little bit much sometimes. What I love so much about the X-T5 is its size and its appearance. So on the street, no one ever looks at you and everyone just assumes it's like a retro film camera, which makes you very, very inconspicuous. That was what was really great about the older XT line. But with the XT5, you get like the incredible performance of like the modern XH series as well in my opinion, or at least very, very close to that kind of performance. And you've retained that really, really beautiful retro style, which, you know, now like we've got Nikon with the ZF and stuff and, and like everyone's starting to, to jump on, on making more retro cameras, but Fuji was the OG when they did this. So, and I'm really, really glad that they've at least stuck to their roots with this, which is real with the X-T5, which is really, really good. Next up we have the EVF, which is excellent. I remember back when I had the X-E3, the EVF on that camera, it was serviceable, but not amazing. Same as the X-Pro2. This made using manual focus lenses like the Voigtlander, which I made a video on, not really that enjoyable. On the X-T5, however, you get a glorious 120 frames per second, big and bright viewfinder, which is just a joy to use. I mean, it really, it's it's awesome. It really, really is really good. I sort of stuck away from uh, switching to mirrorless for the longest time because I always liked the way that an optical viewfinder looked. It just, I just always preferred it because I just didn't think that, were, that the EVFs were really good enough, good quality enough for me to do the switch, but camera it's like the X-T5 and I mean the X-H2S especially, the EVFs on these cameras, on these modern cameras are just exceptional. I really, really like them. I also really love how the front and rear dials can be pressed in. It gives you this secondary click, which I've got it to set as to act as a magnifier for when shooting manually to quickly and easily punch in to check focus. This is something that is actually weirdly missing on the X-H2 and 2S, and it's really baffling that they remove this as it's such a awesome spot to have a programmable button, seeing as your hand naturally rests on these dials. And I'd also imagine that given how much the dials are used for on the X-H series of cameras, because you've got no top controls, you'd want to give people the option to have as many controls map to them as possible, but I don't know, what can you do? Okay, I'd just like to interrupt this video real quick to talk about today's sponsor. Um, me, I'm today's sponsor. I just wanted to let you guys know that I finally released my preset pack. It's been in development for quite a while now, I would say. It's been a while since I've had some presets that I felt were, I've, I was comfortable enough with releasing. I'm super proud of how they've turned out. You get three really, really good presets. You get an everyday one, which you can use for any situation. You get a, a flash specific one, which is what I use for all my nightclub photography. So if you've ever seen any of my nightclub photos and you've wondered how they look so good, that's the preset that I use. And I've also got a really good monochromatic preset in there as well. So for just 30 Australian dollars, you get these three presets plus a PDF that I've written that will help you get the most out of these presets. Yeah, I'm super proud of how they've turned out. And if you wanna help support this channel and help support me, I'd really appreciate it if you go check it out. And I'd also love to see the photos that you guys create with them. So definitely be sure to, to send them over through either my Instagram or to my email and, and I'd love to have a look at them too. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. I'm, I'm so happy with how much you know progress we've made and just 
three months since I basically posted my first video and started taking this seriously. And I'm just, I'm just overjoyed with, with how incredible all the support has been. So I'm going to continue to produce more and more videos and uh, let's get back to the video. We also have the image quality as well, which on the X-T5 is excellent. Absolutely mind-blowingly good. 40 megapixels makes this the highest resolution crop sensor camera that Fuji makes and one of the highest resolution crop cameras on the market. And I think it honestly makes a noticeable difference to the sharpness of the overall images, as well as giving you just lots of headroom to crop to your heart's content. I do notice that there is a difference between the photos shot on the X-T5 versus the X-H2S. Not like, enormous but there is a difference and i do personally prefer the way that the xt5 sensor looks for photos i feel as well like with low light the uh the grain it looks a little bit nicer when you go higher iso on the xt5 i don't know why but i feel like it just <clears throat> this looks better it's got ibis as well which is fantastic because it means you can comfortably hand hold down to around about 1 15th of a second to 1 30th depending on how steady your hands are, which is really, really good because there are, uh, as you know, unfortunately not many Fuji lenses with uh, image stabilization. You've also got low light performance, which is excellent. Um, I get usable images all the way up to 3200 ISO easily. And I think it's pretty on par with the X-H2S. Even if the stack sensor on paper should be better in low light, I don't think the difference is monumental. I think, yeah, it's it's definitely really, it's it's really impressive how good this is in low light. The autofocus performance as well uh, with the latest firmware, and I'll put the latest firmware on the screen um, because I don't quite remember it off my heart, but um, with the latest firmware and using like modern LM Fuji lenses, uh, it's, it's exceptional. It's quick, accurate, and I would say it's probably 85 to 90% as good as the X-H2S. The 2S, however, definitely beats it out in video performance. But just like the title of this video implies, this is the best camera in my opinion for photography. Um, if you plan on shooting any video at all, I would strongly suggest paying the extra for the X-H2S. It really is that good for video. Now, that's not to say that the X-T5 can't shoot video at all. It's got F-Log2, which is awesome. It's got all the all the really nice features that you would expect from a video camera. It shoots 4K, it's great. I think the footage looks fine. Um, you do get a little bit of rolling shutter when you, when you shoot video with it. I, I have used it quite a few times as like a secondary camera, as like a B cam, and I think it works great for that. But using this to film yourself is impossible because you don't have the, the flip out screen. So I would really only be using this to film B roll or, or stuff like where you're, where you're, where you can sort of see the camera itself. Yeah, I, I, I think it's like, it's nice that it can do video, but I would not say that you should like that this is a camera that I would want to do video on. I would much rather buy something like the X-H2. Um, if the price of the X-H2S was like too much, the X-H2 would be a much better option only because for the extra like two, 300 bucks with the X-H2, you get the flip out screen, you get the CF Express card. So your 4K video will transfer so much faster. So, you know, if you're planning on ever doing any video, if you're like, yeah, I might do some video in the future, I would say X-H2 or honestly save up the extra and go the X-H2S because that is just amazing. I mean, I, I, I love the X-H2S so much. Speaking of, you know, screens and flip out screens, the, the X-T5 has this tilt screen, which is great because for photography, because it allows you to use it like a waist level viewfinder and capture images from all sorts of angles, like this snail that I captured the other day after it had been raining. There's a lot of debate online about whether this style of screen is superior to the flip out screen, like on the X-H2S. And I think for video, obviously the flip out screen is superior, but for photos, this tilt screen works really, really well. And I think it really makes things a bit more discreet because you can just like hold the camera sort of at chest level and sort of just look down. And it just allows you to sort of like do street photography or get different angles without having to like, cause you can still see what you're looking at. And the screen, the screen folds in all kinds of different directions. So you can go up, down, left, right, sort of, yeah. So from any any angle that you'd be wanting to shoot at, you can probably, you can usually see the screen pretty well. I haven't had any issues with regards to durability or screen wobble. My screen seems to be rock solid, but I mean, I've had this camera for three months. I've used it pretty extensively over these three months, but I haven't noticed any issues with that. This brings me to the build quality, which I think is pretty good. Um, it's not quite as good as the X-H2S though. That is a tank and just feels a little bit sturdier, but I read a lot of reviews before buying the X-T5 and a lot of people seem to think that it's like made out of paper or something with the amount of claims of terrible build quality floating around. And I mean, it, you know, to be fair, I've never really tried out the, I've never had like an older X-T camera, like an X, I know the X-T2 is like considered legendary for its build quality. So perhaps compared to the older cameras, it might not be as good, but 
from my sort of personal impressions, I don't really see any issues with it. I think it's fine. Like it, it, it is honestly lightweight, but it's well made. And the dials I think are really nice and precise and there's no sloppiness in anything. It feels really good. No mushiness on any of the buttons. Like everything feels nice and clicky and yeah, it feels great in the hand to shoot with. The battery life is also a big bonus. So with the new W235 batteries, I find that I can shoot seemingly forever on a single charge. I think it's like honestly even better than the X-H2S for battery. I can see why they got rid of the option for the battery grip because I don't think you honestly need it. I've never really been in a situation, I've always brought spare batteries with me, but I've never been in a situation where I've been on a shoot where I've actually needed to change batteries. Um, I, I recently did a, a shoot for a menswear label and I had the X-H2S and the X-T5 on a harness and it was a full eight, eight hour, like full day shoot. And I think I changed the battery on the X-H2S once, but the X-T5, I think I got down to like one bar and this was like shooting thousands of photos. So, I mean, it's pretty damn good. I don't know. <laughs> I think the battery life on it is fantastic. I'm very, very happy with it. If you're like upset that it doesn't have a battery grip because you wanted like that extra because you got big hands like me and you want extra like things to hold on to. Small Rig makes this really nice little accessory grip that you can buy that gives you an Arca Swiss plate on the bottom of the camera as well. Um, Fuji makes one too. Fuji's is very expensive. I don't think it's necessary to buy a Fuji's one, but the Small Rig one, it's like 50 or $60. And I think it's really good. I, I think it, it sort of, it's mandatory in my opinion when you're shooting with bigger lenses like the 51.0 or the 16 to 55 2.8. The dual card slots. Um, so. Obviously really, really important. I find I would not use a camera without dual card slots professionally at least. I think that it's really, really important. Redundancy is so, so important. And look, I mean, you know, in the nine years that I've been taking photos, thank God I've never had an SD card fail, but if that did ever happen, I mean, I've always got backups, so I'm never really concerned about it. It doesn't keep me up at night. So on the X-T5, they are both SD cards which I think is a blessing and a slight disappointment. So when I was shooting with Canon, I went for the R6 over the R5, A, because it was cheaper, but B, because I also didn't really want to invest in CF Express cards because I didn't find that they were really necessary for photography, at least for my photography. Um, yeah, I think if you shoot like a lot of like sports or you need a huge buffer or something, sure, okay, I get it. But for me, I don't like, I'm not, I don't like hold the shutter button down and just like fire off thousands of photos at a time. So I think that the, the fact that it's dual SD for photography, I think is awesome. The cards are so much cheaper and you get that redundancy without needing to spend. Like I think when I, when I had, I bought a CF express card for the X-H2S and it was like 300 or like $250 Australian for like a 256 year card. That same card in SD would cost like $40 <laughs> to get a SanDisk card. So you're paying like, I don't know, six, seven times more money for a, for a card and it's good. CF Express is fantastic. It has absolutely spoiled me with like instantaneous transfer speeds and the RAWs in the X-T5 definitely are quite large and it, look, it probably would have been nice to have the speed of those cards, but unlike the X-T X-H2S, which I notice the speeds a lot more because I'm transferring a, a shit ton of like 4K video files. I think the fact that you don't need to fork out like exorbitant sums of money buying these like CF Express cards it's really, really good. I always use dual cards when I'm shooting and yeah, SD cards, they're, they're dirt cheap nowadays and it's always really, really nice to have that redundancy. All right, that's enough positives. Let's talk about what I dislike about the X-T5. So for starters, um, maybe it's just me, but the placement of the switch to change shooting modes being where it is right on top, like right underneath the ISO dial is so annoying. <laughs> I really don't like it being there because I've knocked it so many times when changing my ISO and I've actually gone into like a HDR or into like one of the other shooting modes where it'll take like three photos at once. And I just want to stay in single shot. I don't, I don't want to go into other modes. And it's like, it's something that really bothered me at the start. And it's something that is still prevalent and still annoying. And I just wish that they could put it, the switch, I don't know, somewhere else, or like it was like a programmable option or something because I don't like it where it is. And, and I think as well, like, cause there, there's another similar sort of switch uh, underneath the shutter speed for the stills and movie. Um, so to go between photography and, and, and movie, which I have not knocked anywhere near as often. So I don't know, I'm not sure, but maybe, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only one that has this problem. I don't know, let me know in the comments if you've, if you've encountered the same problem, but 
I really don't like that, <laughs> that, that thing being there. It's, it's like my one big design gripe of this camera. While the EVF is excellent, the EVF in the X-H2S is even better. And it would have been awesome to see that EVF in the X-T5. So I know that you can buy the X-H2 for a few hundred bucks more. And you get the benefits of the better EVF, the build quality and the CF Express cards with the X-T5's magnificent sensor. But then you're still stuck with a massive, you know, a big pro looking camera, which lacks the dials and the shooting experience, which makes using the X-T5 so much fun. Um, and that's kind of like a big reason why I think this is the best camera that Fuji has made for photography, because it's made me really want to go out and take photos. Like I just love using this thing as a camera. Like it, it's so much fun to shoot with this thing. And that's not to say the X-H2S is bad. The X-H2S is, is incredible as well. But the X-H2S, it feels a lot more like a, like a work tool. Whereas the X-T5 feels like a like an actual pleasure to use. And I think at the end of the day for photography, that's kind of the most important thing is you want something that you're gonna to wanna to go out and take photos with. I think the X-H2S is an amazing camera. Do I think it's better than the X-T5? I think it is probably the better or like all round camera. But if I had to just have one and I was just shooting photography and I wasn't doing any video at all, the X-T5, 100%, I would go, or every day, all day, every day over either the X-H2S or the X-H2 because I just don't think there's any replacing the dials or the experience or the size especially because it's it's really small. It's really compact and it's really, really nice. Regardless, these are all fairly minor gripes for what I would consider an otherwise excellent camera. And at the price that you can find them at, I mean, I paid just 2,500 AUD for mine, brand new from Amazon. I believe it's an unbelievable value and probably more than enough camera for 90% of people. I've seen people try to sell XE4s, nearly that amount of money. And it's absurd to me that someone would buy an XE4 over the XT5. Like there is just no comparison between them. Same with like an X100V. Like if you pay 3000 Australian for an X100V, you are absolutely crazy because buy yourself an XE5 with like a 23 F2 on it. It's gonna be slightly larger. It's going to be a lot better and it's going to just be, you know, much more versatile and you've got interchangeable lenses as well. Like why would you not do that? And you'll actually be able to find one in stock brand new. I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. It's it's the, the the cost of these like older XE4 and X100V. The fact that they're still worth so much is crazy. And uh, yeah, absolutely not worth the money that, that anyone wants for them. Without a doubt. No way. This is the best camera that Fujifilm makes for photographers. And if you are currently in the market for a Fujifilm, you would be hard pressed, not strongly considering the XT5. If you are, however, planning on shooting video at all, um, the X-H2S, definitely my pick. That is still the best hybrid shooter that I've ever used. What do you think? Have you got an X-T5? Do you agree with what I think? Hopefully if you're on the fence between an X-T5 or an X-H2S or any other Fuji camera, or maybe you're you know, looking to make the switch to Fuji, you know, hopefully I helped you, you know, make up your mind in, in picking one or the other. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more great photography content, do be sure to subscribe. Bye.